What's up, guys? Going to get back into our weekly teach tapes or wide out of the week starting this week. We'll start it off with Devontae from Sunday night. He's been consistently dominant for the past several years, so really no surprise that he's the guy to start it off. First route we'll look at is his fourth target of the night. It's going to be in cross ball motion here. No one travels nor matches his alignment, so it's a good bet the Steelers are in his own variant, which is confirmed uh, post-snap as they play a pretty vanilla three, which they spot drop to. Devontae wins this route with his stem as much as he does his break point. The young guys, one thing that's consistent on Adam's film is how aggressive he is in his vertical stem, constantly attacking and making everything look the same. Always aggressive body language. On this rep, he does a great job entering his speed cut at full stride, running through it to minimize any loss in speed. Realistically, the only way this gets covered by the corner is if Adam provides an indicator that a break is coming prior to his speed cut. This is the first teach tape we've done in a while, so we'll discuss what a speed cut is exactly. In our terminology, a speed cut is not a route, but rather a break point used on 90s versus access. Access meaning there's space at the break point. We call it a speed cut because to the naked eye, it should look as if we're not losing any speed. It's a one-step break in which we gain ground out of. At ground contact of the speed cut, it's as if we're turning bike handles. The fact that we are gaining ground is why we're able to maintain that speed through the entirety of the route. We want to think about redirecting rather than slamming our brake foot on the speed cut. We like to tell guys rather than creating separation in this situation, we just need to maintain the separation created by the cover defender's alignment and our vertical stem. So in this case, less is more in the break point, simply run and roll through the cut. Should the cover defender be tighter at the break point, or tighter to us at the break point, we would need to create the separation with the separation tool, such as a rocker step to tell our cover defender opposite, or we would have to execute a hard break to get flat with more urgency. However, versus this contour, Adam's body language and his stem essentially makes this routes on air. This is his seventh target of the night, aligned at three in trips. Two things Adams has been a lead at throughout his career on display here uh, on this quick outbreak. The first of which is how he controls the tempo. He doesn't run what we would call a paper route where we just run five yards and break to the out. Watch how he changes speeds at the top of the route prior to breaking to the out. This change in tempo freezes his cover defender enough to separate. Think tempo to twitch where we slow the tempo down and then speed it back up with some type of twitchy movement at the top. Here he works some type of hip shift. Situationally, it also afford, uh, affords the two verticals to clear coverage on the outside. Secondly, Adams executes his move close enough to the defender to force him to react to the tempo and the slight hip shift at the top, but far enough to avoid collision on the exit. A good coaching point we tell guys uh, that we work with is to execute the move at handshake distance, meaning myself or the wide out and the cover defender both extended their arms. They should just barely be able to complete a handshake. Devante is often one inside versus a catch or wall defender on these low level option routes. Uh, so often, you can see how well he's able to move defenders to win either to or away from their leverage. So the use of the tempo on this particular route and his history uh, winning on these routes either way, whether it's an inbreak or an outbreak, causes the cover defender to be late to the outbreak in this situation. Devante's running a dig route here for his eighth target of the game. He's lined at the top of the screen working against a cloud corner. Uh, due to the alignment of the corner, Devante has to eat up space prior to hitting his split release. The rule we'll use for guys we work with uh, versus soft press is if we can't touch them, we have to eat up space before working our release. The reason for that is because space is time. If we execute our release two to three yards away from our cover defender, they don't have to react aggressively due to the space and time presented between us, and they have an angle to overtake us upon our exit. So Devante power skips into his split release here. A split release is executed by coming to balance with our shoulders and hips square to present as a two-way go prior to loading one foot and hip to push us into the direction we want to exit. Both feet don't have to necessarily strike the ground on the split. However, we need to present square because it affords us a two-way go, which is ultimately what freezes our cover defender. He does a great job getting his shoulders turned to the exit prior to slightly blading to eliminate his shoulder. The terminology blade refers to the slight rotation of the torso um, to prevent the cover defender from latching onto our shoulder pad and steering us or our breastplate. It could be used at the line of scrimmage or on any type of second level release versus a head up catch defender or a backer expanding looking to collision us uh, up the seam. 
Once he clears the corner, he gets vertical uh, prior to speed cutting into his dig. Adams does a great job cruising out of his break to settle into the window for the quarterback. Devontae wins on a slant on his 12th target of the night. He works his hezzy release to move the corner. Uh, anybody who has been studying or watching Devontae over the past several years knows he wins vertically so often with this hezzy speed release, as you'll see in the next few clips. He's simply just reading his cover defender. Should the corner stay inside, it becomes a speed release, and Adams now has a head start to the reception area. Should the corner overcommit to that hezzy when he gets that hip displacement, uh, he'll, he'll stick his foot in the ground for a single jab and slip back inside, uh, getting back vertical, depending on what the route is. He does a great job here pairing it with a hezzy single to win inside on the slant. Once again, Adams consistently has a plan at the line of scrimmage and is always dictating the tempo. The last rep we'll look at is his second touchdown of the game. He's working what we refer to as a pivot or delay route uh, terminology, completely arbitrary, 10 offenses, 10 different names. Where the wideout works out to the flat prior to returning it back inside. When Adams goes into cross ball motion and he gets a line, he's in a nasty or reduced split, meaning he's just tighter to the end man of the line of scrimmage. In this case, it's the tight end. This may be the reason that the corner had outside leverage uh, due to that reduced split. I believe this has to be some type of bust. As you'll see, the bracket here is on the tight end vertically. Uh, the corner's outside leverage leads me to believe that this that he was expecting some type of help inside. With that being said, Adams does a great job using the corner's leverage against him. Now, should the corner have had inside leverage here, Adams may have had to stay on the arrow or outbreak a bit longer to get the corner to chase. However, since the corner already has that outside leverage, Adams just has to put him on his back prior to breaking it back inside. The ball is delivered on time and very well may have beat the inside bracket coverage regardless. So that'll do it for our first wideout of the week of the 2023 season. We're going to look to continue to do this every week. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Appreciate any feedback you may have. I hope you're able to learn something.